Okay, relax. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to welcome to our new book club. Game yes. of Thrones. How are you? Also let us know if you can hear us okay. Like both mm-hmm. of us. Because I'm not wearing headphones or anything, but wow. Okay. Hello everyone. So today we're talking about Hemingway. Mr. Hemingway and Mr. Steinbeck. Um oh we have different boys here. Ooh, yeah. No. Oh. Um, I'm still not recovered from coming away. It's fine. Um, okay, perfect. Hello. So, okay, so we're going to be comparing them, but this is going to be much less of like a debate than our Dickens just, versus Tolstoy yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. situation. Um, we picked these two and they actually ended up being like so much more interesting to compare than I think we thought because we have mm-hmm. World War I. World War II, we have an ambulance driver and we have the war correspondent. Uh, We have Hemingway looking back because he wrote this after his experience in the war. And then we have Steinbeck's kind of immediate impressions. We have fiction versus nonfiction to an extent. So we have the truth versus the censored content. There we go. Those are kind of like the main Yes. Comparisons. Amazing. Um, but yeah, there will be spoilers in this live show. So just a heads up, especially for A Farewell to Arms. Um, I think that's probably the only one that's important because <laughs> Steinbeck's is just an amalgamation of dispatches that he wrote um, mm-hmm. when he was in the war. So yeah, but definitely let us know what your overall thoughts, your star rating, whatever you want to say. Uh, we've just seen so many people reading these books and like, thank you so much for joining us because we're so excited. So yeah. Yay. <laughs> okay. So we don't have like a general structure, but Carolyn. She's gonna, yeah. She's how, are you, a nice chat. how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. great. <laughs> I'm excited because I think when Emma and I were thinking about these two books, we were trying to come up with books that would be interesting to compare. And we always felt like their writing styles was somewhat similar. And so, and of course, like they both experienced war, but in very different ways. And what I found really interesting was, I think that the differences are so stronger than I was expecting. Yeah. The similarities. And it was interesting to see like, which one, I preferred and I'm interested to see like what you think and what everyone else thinks about um like yeah which one we prefer and and what we prefer about each one so Mm -hmm. um okay let's see we have 3.25 okay specific and four for Hemingway um yes yes Mm -hmm. Carolyn your rug is gorgeous thank you (laughs) Oh, two and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three stars. Okay. Okay. Four for both. Amazing. Um, okay, so I will just say straight up which one I preferred. I preferred Hemingway. Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I've fallen in love with him so recently. Like a huge thank you to Carolyn because she yeah, it was all all honestly you. So Amazing. Um, I'm so glad. <laughs> Five stars. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Oh, wow. See, that's interesting. Mm. I think I was just destined not to love Steinbeck as much because I'm not a fan of the short the mm. short story format, especially like these aren't even short stories. These are like little flickers of the mm. war. Um, mm. Some of them are so gorgeous, but I think just as a whole, I was destined to like Steinbeck so much more mm-hmm. or no Hemingway so much more. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I was mm. one no, it's fine. Oh, ouch. <laughs> I was really surprised that you loved well, I wasn't surprised that you loved a move a movable feast when you read it. Mm. Um, but I didn't really know how you would feel about Hemingway. And I've just loved watching you fall in love with him and like having other people read him as well and like hearing your guys' thoughts. Like it's just so exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, I just love to see it. To see it. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to like him as much as I did, but there is just something like, I don't know, there's something ineffable about him. And I just, I love him. Um, And yeah, I would agree. I think we both had a hard time getting engaged with Steinbeck Mm -hmm. Um, previously. I think we both read The Pearl, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Have you read yeah. anything else? Um, oh, yeah. I read Of Mice and Men in high yeah. school. Yeah. And you read... Um, oh, The Moon is Down, which I loved. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah. Um, and they were both like at such different points in their writing career. I mean, I think Steinbeck, I don't know how young he was when he went to be a war correspondent, but... Mm. Um, I don't think he was as young as uh, Hemingway, because I think Hemingway oh, was okay. 19 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, which one should we start with? I'm feeling like I need to talk about Hemingway with you guys. I'm yes. feeling like yes. I need I to say Hemingway. <laughs> closure. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. I don't know what it is. Like, I really can't tell you what it is, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to put it down. Um, right. I feel like, and this is kind of what I told you when I was in Canada, when you were reading mm -hmm. Mobile Fever, his writing is so spare and it's so like, just straightforward that I feel like it feels less like a narrative and more like a conversation. Like, I feel like that's kind of the flow. Like, it's just, you fly through it so quickly. I think just because he kind of, speaks to you as if he's like actually speaking to you mm -hmm. and like telling you a story through conversation I don't know I just yeah yeah the dialogue the dialogue is just my absolute favorite and even though like I've seen a lot of you guys saying the description and like I do agree to an extent that sometimes it's a bit dry <laughs> it never feels like I want to like put it down it feels like I just want to wait what did yeah. you see Oh, sorry. No, um, someone said, "Where is it? Where is it?" Um, I don't know. Know. Hemingway, Hemingway. It's from Daisy Townsend. Um, Hemingway gained an extra star for Rinaldi alone. Yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. I love Rinaldi. He's probably my favorite character. <laughs> sorry, keep going. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, love it. Didn't like the dialogue. I like the description mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Mm. I just think the dialogue, like, oh, what is it? I was reading someone talk about it. Um, someone called it, you are on the outside of intimacy with mm -hmm. Hemingway. Um, and then there's also, he writes on, I think he calls it the principle of the iceberg. Um, I think that was in the introduction mm -hmm. too, where there's seven eighths underwater for every part that shows and anything that can be eliminated only strengthens the iceberg. Mm -hmm. um, so this man is just cutting away and cutting yeah. away um, yeah. He thinks, yeah true he thinks it makes it stronger um mm -hmm. but then there's something interesting in Steinbeck too I guess just to switch there really quickly but he said it is in the what did he say it is in the things not mentioned that the untruth lies so kind of like opposite views I guess mm -hmm. cool but. <laughs> The cheese line. <laughs> it says, wait, I missed it. Yeah, beware the cheese, it'll get you. <laughs> I remember mm -hmm. reading that scene for the first time. And of mm -hmm. course, like these men are literally getting like blown up, injured, you know, dying. I was I I laughed. I feel like a horrible person for admitting that. But like they're eating first of all, it's so Italian. I love the fact that they're ha they're at war and they're having like spaghetti and like gallons of wine and they're just like, oh, get the cheese. The cheese is more important. Like, I just love get it. I thought it was so funny. And then he's like, and then they're like, oh, you can get medals. You can, you know, um, like get awarded, awarded yeah. injured in the war. And he's like, but I literally didn't do anything. I was just eating cheese. Like, I just, oh my God. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> But I also feel like that makes me a horrible person. <laughs> I can't remember the dark side. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> that scene, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I like didn't laugh, but then the, the whole part okay. afterward, the whole part just... describing like um, when he's kind of awakening from the blast and like looking around and then like mm -hmm. reaching down for his legs. I, it was just like so so visceral oh my god yeah and um, like the scene where he's in the ambulance after he's injured and he's like describing like the men's blood like falling on him and then like the man ultimately dying like that was devastating like so yeah 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 true that is true mm -hmm. yeah Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 
Ooh, okay, what do we, what would you like to talk about with Hemingway? Because I'm, I'm like still not, like I finished it. I'm not going to like give away the end. We're not going to like talk about the ending, maybe not yet. I don't think I'm ready, but like okay. I finished the book and I was just like, for a week afterwards, I would just cry on and off. Really? Yeah. Oh my like, God. It, it wasn't all the book, but like it was kind of a little bit the book. Yeah. Um, it just really, really impacted me. And so, I wasn't okay. expecting it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Catherine then? Like, do you want to yeah, talk about let's talk character? About, okay. Let's talk about the relationship. Okay. Yes. Ooh, I think I've seen most of you say that you're not a fan. And like, it, yeah, I wasn't affected because of the romance and, or the relationship or anything like that. I didn't get mm-hmm. super invested in their connection with each other. But I think just the things that he expressed about life through them, mm-hmm. um, that's what really got me. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think, I do, yeah, yeah. I think it's the way that they explored a relationship at war in general, rather than the relationship itself, that is what really like hit me emotionally. Because I agree with a lot of you guys where you're saying that you had a really hard time connecting to their relationship because it was very much like insta love, and they sort of saw each other and like you know, their relationship just didn't really have much progression rather than, like, I know a lot of people said that it was kind of, like, unbelievable um, because there wasn't much development with that. I mean, I agree completely, but I think that the way that he explored, like, falling in love at war and then how that affected him emotionally and then the repercussions after that, for me, I think it was less about the people themselves and Mm. about, like, the relationship itself does that make yeah. sense yeah absolutely i agree yeah i think that's what a lot of you guys are seeing yeah um as well i think there was i actually did really appreciate their development i think it was i think it was kind of well done sometimes because like they meet and she's like i'm just gonna substitute you for my previous partner who died recently mm-hmm. and yeah. he's like he's not really into it he's just kind of there um, he's also substituting her for whatever he needs at the moment, but then they mm-hmm. start, they do start to develop a more, you know, a relationship of, of, of depth that means something, but like, I didn't, I didn't feel that. Like I kind of got that Hemingway was, yeah. I don't know. It was just weird because I always felt detached from them, but I could see the mm-hmm. development. And of course, like the thing that I didn't really get until the book ended um, yes, there are spoilers in these live shows, absolutely. Because <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil something right now, so maybe beware me or something. Um, <laughs> like you get to the end of the book and like you see that he's writing the story like after mm-hmm. he's died, so that the whole story is infected with like her death by him knowing the ending by him like everything is just tinged with this grief, um, mm-hmm. and then going back and reading the whole thing, like things start to pop up that are so devastating i know mm-hmm. and there is so much foreshadowing it is yeah insane. i know but like i didn't on page four like right away when he opens the book the soldiers marched as though they were six months gone with child and then on page 24 when he's like waiting for Catherine, he's talking about the statues um marble busts all looked like a cemetery you could not tell anything about them mm-hmm I don't know. I was just like, I, I want to read it again now. Um, I know. Yeah. But I think the their dialogue sometimes and like, it's just very hard. Hemingway's dialogue. I'm like, is this how people, it's just mm-hmm. so easy. And like, of course, it's like so many freaking years ago, but I'm like, yeah. this is so hard for me to imagine two people actually. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting. But like, mm-hmm. his whole thing is like, I'm going to talk about the truth. So I mean, people must. Yeah. I don't know. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. It is. And I feel like it would be interesting because I think about Fitzgerald because obviously they were very good friends and they wrote around the same time. Like, do his women read similarly or is it just like the style of or like the type of person that they're writing or I don't know, like to try and understand that that woman that they're writing and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I also think you do have to take into account that like so much time has passed and culturally oh, yeah. things are so different, um, obviously. But yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like we all, I think, saw that coming, but like, it's still, it's, I mean, you were there. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> it was so hard. Um, yes. And like not her death, that's the thing. I think a lot of you were saying that too, that you weren't super affected by the fact that it was Catherine passing away. Mm -hmm. um, just the like the way that the grief is expressed and then the way the book just ends. Yeah. Because there's nothing left to say. His life, is his story is over. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so, it's very raw. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, they will do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't know to what extent they loved each other. How much heart did they put in until the end approaches? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah, I really started to feel more, I think, open to them as a pair, especially when they, like, when he leaves the war, when he says a farewell to arms and then they, they row to Switzerland. I think that was really well done mm -hmm. um, when they're taking their trip across in their rowboat. Or is it a rowboat? Yeah, pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I don't, ah, oh, just so good. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, oh, yeah. Um, mm, yes, oh my gosh. Because I also feel like you know that the stakes are high and, like, you don't know if they're going to get arrested or, like, if people are going to find them. And, of course, like, because you know that she's suffering as well, it's just, I felt so, like, on edge in all of those scenes. And I think it adds so much tension, um, which is done so well by Hemingway. Yeah. I also want to talk to you guys about the rain because that is like one of my favorite elements in the book is the way that he like personifies rain in a way as, and like symbolizes it as death or like death approaching. And I just think it's like brilliantly done. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very um, true. When I went into A Farewell to Arms, like I didn't really know there was a love story aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I really thought the book was going to be so much more about like him in the war. And mm -hmm. it is to an extent, but it really morphs quickly into like him and Catherine. Yeah. Um, but like, I think... I don't know, because the war just invades so much of their relationship that you you don't ever leave it. You can't ever really leave it. Right. Um, and then, yeah, the most devastating, or I guess you could say the most devastating death in the book is natural. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just the, oh, the way he says this is what people got for loving each other. And I'm like, oh, God, I know. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was forced, and that's the, yeah, that's the thing. Oh my yeah. God. Mm, yeah. Oh my god. It reminded me of the of Levin a little bit. Um, not mm -hmm. in the, the grief, but just in this like, oh my gosh, she's is she is she okay? Is she, like, just, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Just like her dialogue. That's so true. Oh yeah, the scenes with Rinaldi and the priest when they're talking about the war. I mm. love those scenes. And the way that they the way that they talk about it because I feel like a lot so I love a lot of war fiction and I've read a lot of it. And I think what I love about A Farewell to Arms is probably my favorite like war story is that it kind of shows war in a lot of different aspects. And I feel like War and Peace does this as well really beautifully, is that it's not just, and I think that's kind of what I didn't love so much oh, about yeah. Once There Was a War, because Once There Was a War is very much like, we are in the viewpoint of Steinbeck and it's really just what's going on in the war. Whereas I feel like A Farewell to Arms and War and Peace, you get a lot of the emotion and you not only get how it's affecting the the men but also like the women the nurses and it gives you a different perspective which i thought was really interesting and i feel like it makes it stronger emotionally and i just didn't feel as emotionally connected to once there was a war which i find interesting because you think you would since it's nonfiction. because yeah. like i was expecting like oh well these are true events that he's writing about and it, yeah. th these are his own experiences um 
but there's a way where I guess like portraying it through characters that you get emotionally attached attached to, I guess amplifies that, which I just found really like really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you spend the whole I mean the whole world is colored through um mm -hmm. what's his name? Frederick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you get so I don't know, you just get so attached and then yes, I went full Bradley. Yeah. Oh absolutely. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, that too. That was so good. The part before he gets injured, I think, where he's talking to his, I guess, yeah, colleagues yeah. about the war. Mm -hmm. um, and just the whole sentiment throughout. Like it's repeated a, a bunch of times, which is, I think, funny for Hemingway because I feel like he's not, you know, he's very spare, but he's always like, wars aren't won anymore, aren't won anymore. They go on forever. There's no end to a war. Victory isn't the end of a war. Um, those are some of my favorite parts too, but yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steinbeck uh, writes reports through the lens of other people and Hemingway feels through them. Oh, mm. yeah. I like that. Yeah. But I also feel like that's kind of what Steinbeck had to do. Like, because yeah. he was a correspondent and he was censored, obviously he couldn't go into as much detail. And, um, and th like, the situation was entirely different because of his position in the war. Whereas Hemingway is writing this after the war, reflecting, making it, you know, semi-fictional or entirely fictional, basing it on his own experiences. So they're very different books in themselves. So it's hard to... It's hard to compare them even though they're similar, um, which I think makes it an even more interesting analysis because you can compare different things, but you can also say that they're similar and entirely different. Yeah. But they're, you know, yeah. I get it. I get what you're saying. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I have these thoughts in my head and I don't know how to articulate them. <laughs> Sometimes I start a sentence. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this. <laughs> um, what did I, okay, there's one thing I wanted to ask that I was actually a bit confused about. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really confused. I was just kind of like, interesting. So he's in the hospital um, with Catherine. The child is born, um, but not really. But then the doctor is like, oh, your son is healthy. He's great. Mm -hmm. And then he tells Catherine like hey our son is healthy and great and the nurse is like what do you mean your son's dead yeah and I was like well what what the hell is the doctor talking about yeah I don't see I don't know I feel like is that the doctor hoping that like maybe the child wasn't entirely dead yet and he was saying like he didn't want to scare him like maybe we could try to save the child like we don't know yeah. and I yeah. think that that's the interesting part about it too is because we are kind of in the same position as Hemingway or Frederick where we don't entirely know what's going on and that that's why we are like yeah you know, okay. Okay. On edge. Um, yeah maybe he thought he could save their child that's what, that's what my impression was yeah yeah that was just like I was like oh my god another more death more death um yeah, on page 280, this one I, like, lost. I was, like, going to throw the book out the window as well. The part where he's, like, you died. You did not know what it was about. You never had time to learn. They threw you in and told you the rules. And the first time they caught you off base, they killed you. Um, and then there's just this immediate switch back to the war. And it was just like, oh, oh, we're, ta we're talking about something else. Like, you're going through something else. You're going through a bunch of things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, stay around and they would, yeah, kill you. Or, okay, yeah. Maybe, yeah, he heard what he wanted to as well. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a great quote. Mm. Man, just, okay. just emotionally wrecked. They <laughs> take away. In the best way. Emotionally wrecked by the hands of Hemingway. I also wanted to ask you this as well because I haven't asked you yet, but um, I went through all the alternate endings and I circled like I think five. Yeah. I wanted to know if you had a favorite. Oof. Okay. Well, yeah. I think that 
I love the ending that he chose. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I think yes, because true. I think that, like, what you were saying before, like, that was the end for him. Like, that was the end of the story. Like, he, at one point, he was going to talk about, like, the other people that he um, introduced the reader to in the story, like, Rinaldi and the priest, and explain or tell us what eventually happened to them. But I think the fact that he didn't just proves that, like, that wasn't what was important for him and his story ended with Catherine. Yeah. And so although I would have loved to hear how Rinaldi ended up or where he ended up, I think the fact that he doesn't tell us makes it a stronger ending because to him at that time it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And also I feel like that would have sort of put a bow on the ending. And I like how Hemingway just sort of was like, that's it. Like no bow or anything. Like we're just closing the box and, you know, you know what I mean? Um, Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Um, Okay, I circled number one. If anyone doesn't have the alternate ending, someone asked if they're like substantially different. A couple of them are, but most of them are just the same iterations of the same gut punch in a different way, I guess. Yeah. Something I find really interesting is how he says the same thing, but in different ways. Like he'll use different words to say the same exact sentence. Um, let's see, can I give an example? Um, okay, um, okay. So can I, can I read this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is, um, <laughs> the original basis for the Scribner's Magazine ending. Oh no, um, okay, that's, it's 20, item, item 64, handwritten manuscript numbered 650 um, to 652 with emanations and parts crossed out. Okay, so one of them ends with, um, but they are all parts of something that was finished. And then he goes into like explaining where the people went. Um, and then he ends it with, I could tell what has happened since then, but that is the end of the, st- of the story. And then he goes on and says, many things have happened. Things happen all the time. Everything blunts and the world keeps on. You get, mo- um, you get most of your life back like goods recovered from a fire. It all keeps on as long as your life keeps on. And then it keeps on. It never stops. It only stops for you. Some of it stops while you are still alive. The rest goes on and you go on with it. On the other hand, you have to stop a story. You have to end it. Oh, you uh, you stop it at the end of whatever it was you were writing about. And so like the way that he's sort of just explaining how like stories have to end, I just found it really interesting the way that he worded it in different ways to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just so good. (laughs) My favorites are one, mm-hmm. three. Okay, one is that is all there is to the story. Catherine died, and you will die, and I will die, and that is all I can promise you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I liked eleven. Um, because it ends with in writing, you have a certain choice that you do not have in life. Mm. Just stop. And oh, then- yeah, I highlighted that one too. I circled the one you just read as well. Mm. And then finally, I liked 38. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just read yeah. another. Yeah. Um, it's number nine. Oh, and yeah. And it ends saying, so he was all right. I had a son now. I didn't give a damn about him. All I cared about was Catherine. Because I think that one, he makes the son alive. Oh, yeah. That's the one he's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's see, what else? Oh, here's another example. Um, And that is the end of the story. And then another one, and that is the finish of the story. Like just the way that he changes the one word and how it really does make a difference. Yeah, yeah. What else? Let's see. Ooh, yeah. this one is the Fitzgerald ending. It's number 34. Oh, yeah. um, you learn a few things as you go along, and one of them is that the world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. 
Those it does not break, it kills. It kills the very good and the very gentle and the very brave impartially. If you are none of these, you can be sure it will kill you too, but there will be no special hurry. Like he ended up putting that in the book, I think like earlier on, not at the way end. But that, I, oh God. Thank you, Gerald. Please, please. <laughs> oh my God. Um, oh, yeah, it's two. Sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, but in the nights, you know, in the nights, they do not fool you. Like, just those, like, he has such a way to say so much with so little. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. oh, and that, it was like saying goodbye to a statue. <sighs> that one's in the, the actual one, I think, yeah. as well. But geez, Louise. Yeah, 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 the Fitzgerald ending. Oh, yeah, the final alternate ending, it says, um, you can stop your life the way you stop a story, but you do not do it, and afterwards you are not sorry. It stops for a while by itself, and then it goes on again. So, like, his life stopped and his story stopped, stopped, but it still kept going on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my and guys, it's a good Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's talk about this too, because um, this is when everything kind of starts going off the rails mm. in the book. Um, he is in the Italian army, if we didn't already say that. He's an ambulance driver for them because he was in Italy when the war started, um, and he speaks Italian. And they're retreating, and um, he... I forget what position he's in, but anyway, he's in charge of making sure to an extent that people don't desert. Um, and two people from, I guess, their group do desert and he shoots one of them or is it two? I think yeah. one of them gets away. Yeah. I think it's yeah. just one of them. Um, anyway, so I think, um, yeah, the other one dies. And then when he gets to, I guess, a checkpoint or something, the Italian officers think he's a spy. Um, yeah. And they line him up to shoot our guy, our protagonist. And then he escapes. So it's just kind of this ironic reversal where he's just made sure that someone doesn't desert. And he's mm -hmm. killed someone um, yeah. of his own army. And then he gets to this place. And they're going to do the same to him, even though he's, mm -hmm. he's not deserting. He's yeah. um, doing everything he's supposed to do. And that's when he's like, OK, I need to get out of here for my literal own life. Otherwise, mm -hmm. someone is going to kill me and it's not even the enemy yeah. it's my own people oh tenente is lieutenant yeah yeah so he's a lieutenant okay um yeah so that uh and then that's when he's like i i'm done with the war i'm getting out um mm. but it's just like oh my god yeah. yeah yes and he escapes in the in the river right mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's the whole thing because mm. it gets to right. officers and people are like, oh, like, you're not, you're not who you're supposed to be. You're lying. Um, we don't trust you. And even though he's obviously a part of the ambulance corps, mm. they, like, um, it's, it's kind of going to be over for you. So, yeah. yeah. Um, should we switch over to Steinbeck a little bit? Yes. Okay. Okay. How do I even go to Steinbeck from that? Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> that's the thing. I just really appreciated Hemingway so much more than Steinbeck in this instance because I think he really just showed, like, the trauma, the bluntness, the mm -hmm. absolute awfulness. It's very anti-war. Um, it's a huge exploration of everything. And then to go to Steinbeck, which is all – I mean, he admits it in the introduction that his little snippets are unreal and they're puffed up and they're pageantry – and now that so much time has passed, he's like, I don't even believe anything I was writing in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, okay, I want to hear the good stuff. About yeah, I want to, because I think Emma and I both agree with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think it'd be interesting for you guys to comment, like, what you liked about Steinbeck's writing, because a lot of you were saying you liked Steinbeck better. So definitely let us know. Um, 
Oh, Steinbeck gave me Murakami vibes with all the observation in his description style. That's interesting. Um, everyone's also talking about the goat. <laughs> the goat? The goat. <laughs> Can I tell you the goat? I read that, like, I was I was telling you about oh, it. Yeah. When I was, I was like spaced out reading that book and I was reading it, like I didn't get that they were actually talking about a real goat. I thought they were talking about kind of an elderly man. And then <laughs> like he's drinking the oil that's dripping from the fighter planes. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, yep, that's a man. Oh, <laughs> that's that's so funny. Funny. It's a little yeah. goat. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see. Yes. Yeah, the introduction was my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a man? Okay, other people thought it was <laughs> You're not alone, Emma. <sighs> yeah, I thought it was human. Yes, it was an actual goat. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So I do have tabs we could refer to. Um, yeah, the mundane and situations that are, you know, so different from every everyday life. Yeah. Oh, okay. This was one of my favorite parts, and I found it really interesting. So what I liked about this a lot was how it just. Like it was straight information coming from a person that actually experienced it. Um, talking about real people. Um, so I feel like it sort of amplified it in that sense. So it's on page 32 of this edition. Let's see, what chapter is this? News from home. Yeah, this is one oh. of my favorites. Um, it says, it seems to me that we are afraid to announce our losses. It seems almost as if the War Department was afraid that the country couldn't take it. I never saw anything the country couldn't take. Um, we didn't hear much, he says. It's a funny thing, but the closer you get to action, the less you read papers and war news. I remember before I joined up, I used to know everything that was happening. I knew what Turkey was doing. I even had maps with pins and I drew out campaigns with colored pencils. Now I haven't looked at a paper in two weeks. The first man went on. This paper I saw had some funny stuff in it. It seemed to think that the war was nearly over. Um, and then it goes on to say, it seems to me that the folks at home are fighting one war and we're fighting another one. They've got theirs nearly won, and we've just started on ours. I wish they'd get in the same war we're in. I wish they'd print the casualties and tell them what it's like. I think maybe that they'd like to get in the same war we're in if they could get to do it. Um, and I just, like, I found it so interesting because I think a lot of, like, propaganda is that way where it's very skewed to what's actually happening and to, like, see that from a person that's actually in it and... Yeah explaining it I thought that was really interesting um yeah yeah and then note to like um related you do definitely have to read it um yeah to, this is what I meant to yeah um as a historical source because it's so it is very much for the war effort you can't really say too many negative things about what's happening um yeah. you can't really write with too much reality because you're gonna get censored mm -hmm. um so it was interesting that way, but it did feel sometimes a little bit icky to me, I think. I think that's a little bit what kept me from engaging with it because it's just not, it's not a novel like Hemingway that you can, it's not a remembered experience. It's a piece of um, journalism serving a very real purpose mm -hmm. that like obviously not all of us are gonna agree with all of the time. So um, yeah. Well, um I got, oh no, uh, people are saying that their favorite chapter was the people of Dover. Yeah. I also loved that one as well. I have highlighted, um, there's a quality in the people of Dover that may well be the key to the coming German disaster. They are encour incorrigibly, incorruptibly unimpressed. Um, Jerry is like the weather to him. He complains about it and then promptly goes about what he was doing. Nothing in the world is as important as his garden and in other days, his lobster pots. Weather and Jerry are alike in that they are um, inconvenient and sometimes make messes. Surveying a building wrecked by a big shell, he says Jerry was bad last night as he would discuss a, a windstorm. And I just, I love that, how they are just, like he says, inc um, incorruptibly unimpressed. It's like, 
you just go about their lives. Um, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, I think this was both of our favorites sometimes, uh, the vegetables. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that was really funny where you're just talking about how the English absolutely boil the mm -hmm. bananas out of everything um, to make sure they don't revolt <laughs> like suspicious of vegetables yeah um, mm -hmm. yeah the vegetables what else did I write? I just, the introduction I think was the, ah, such a like tight, compact piece of writing. And mm -hmm. um, I'm just really excited to read more of Steinbeck's like actual novels. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like <laughs> East of Eden and Grapes of Wrath, which I've been wanting to read for like a year now. <laughs> and I keep saying it and I know- You're it's gonna read it, yeah. No, they're like literally right on my desk. <laughs> What else didn't I like about it? Um, what did I like about it? Carolyn, what did we like about it? I liked many things about it. I just think mm -hmm. trying to compare it to Hemingway, who I have had a long, loving relationship with for, for many years now. <laughs> it's just, and I'm like just getting it more into Steinbeck. Yeah. Um, so I do think it's hard in that way where I'm just emotionally connected to Hemingway's writing a little bit more. Um, but I do, I love the honesty, like, because I think Hemingway is a very honest writer and he prides himself on telling the truth, but he does that in a, in a fictional format, in a fictional way. Whereas we have nonfiction here who yeah, rings Hemingway's more. also telling us the truth, but like the plain truth, you know, not through another means of fiction. Um, so I think that I really appreciated his honesty in this. Um, I feel like I had a bit of an opposite. Oh, really? Okay. Do you want to elaborate? Not that he's not honest, but it just felt, it felt like uh, the nonfiction felt more like fiction. Like if we're talking about it as like a historical artifact, it definitely felt more fictitious mm -hmm. because he's adding and he's deleting things. He's maybe making things seem a different way than maybe they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I could just feel like the, the shield that was there, like the, if I felt very coddled because like he's sending these back home. Right. Um, Whereas Hemingway does, I mean, he doesn't, I mean, it's important to note that Steinbeck like has to write this way in a sense, because that's his job. Um, people aren't going to let, you know, too much through, I guess. But yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay, everyone keeps talking about the elf scene. Which one is the elf scene? I have no clue what you guys are talking about. Like, did I not read an elf scene? Am I forgetting something? Why can't I? Yeah, can someone? I, why do I not remember reading an elf scene? Can you guys tell us what chapter it is? <laughs> We're bad hosts. <laughs> the elf. Near the Near end. The end. Oh, the story of it. It's literally titled The Story of an Elf. I completely forgot. Why, why is this one not in my mind? I know, same. Elf as elf providing the elf. Oh, oh, the leprechaun, the leprechaun with the whiskey. <laughs> okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, courtesy of Canada, hey, your people. <laughs> my people. <laughs> I don't know why I completely blocked this chapter. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, they, they give them alcohol. Okay, I don't know why that got obliterated from my whiskey elf on the whiskey shelf. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Felt so out of place, like it wasn't meant to be in the book. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, there were definitely parts in this where I was like, what am I reading? Yeah, yeah. Where it was kind of like, yeah, like the goat too. Like, what? what is this? What is this time, Nick? 
Bizarre. Blonde. <laughs> How many stars did you give this, Carolyn? Um, three. Me too. Because I liked, and I, I saw a few other people saying this, like I liked some of them and I connected to some of them, but also some of them I just did not connect to whatsoever. And I was just like, you know, reading to read. <sighs> what else do I want to say? I think just like, I'm so glad we read both of these. Me too. Yeah. And I'm scared for next month. Oh, yeah. How are we feeling about David Copperfield? We're going back to Dickens. We only left him for a short while. <laughs> He's back. It's like 900 pages, I think. Yeah, yeah. But w weren't we saying that, like, we might just read it for the whole two months and then, like, yeah. this Catcher in the Rye isn't very long. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll oh, read it over two months. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's oh. quite much. Thank yeah. You. I wonder which edition do you have? Oh, some people started it. You guys are on it. Yeah, you guys are ahead of us. Oh, should we do a poll? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, is wait. there is there a well, poll? I thought they added something new on YouTube where, like, I could ask a poll, but I'm on StreamYard. Oh, but you know what? You have a phone. YouTube on my phone. <laughs> you have a phone. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can, like, wave, but I can't put a... Oh, someone's in the yeah. middle of David Copperfield. Look at you. Impressed. Um... Okay, you know what? I don't know. You don't know? Can Which you just do like a how we used to do Dickens versus Tolstoy? Do you oh, want to do that? True. Yeah, I can do that if you guys want to vote on which one you preferred. I actually don't know. I feel like it'll be quite close. Yeah, I think it's quite like split. <gasps> Wait, Richard Armitage does does the David Copperfield audiobook? Who is that? <laughs> um, he's a a British actor with like one of the best voices. Oh my god. I might have to find it. Oh my god. Guys, the internet is hard. <laughs> what what do you mean the internet is hard? Oh yes. I'm You're just very um, <laughs> I'm not typing Dickens versus Tolstoy. I'm typing Hemingway. <laughs> Hemingway versus Steinbeck. Or Steinbeck. Have we decided what book we're reading in June yet? Yes. Can I tell you what it is right now? Yeah. No. Well, I mean, you can, but I forget. Um, isn't it Fathers and Sons? No? Yes. What? Fathers we're reading Fathers and Sons? That's not even on our list. <laughs> what did we pick? I forget what we picked. Turgenev. Wasn't it going to be Turgenev? I don't know. I don't remember. Wait. <laughs> Count of Monte Cristo is definitely not. Oh, oh my god. I think that, that was the month that we're asking you guys to vote though, right? Yeah, but... Yeah. Because we don't really know what to pair with Brothers Karamazov. And then mm. I remember someone saying that Fathers and Sons. Oh, yeah. but that's a good maybe, option. Maybe we'll... <laughs> Carolyn just wants to read Fathers and Sons. <laughs> maybe we can... I think we have to pick different books than the ones that we originally thought. And then maybe we could have you guys vote. Yeah, because I think our three oh, options... Which one did you think? I thought we were voting between The Stranger, Monte Cristo, or Fathers and Sons. But I didn't think we, I thought, I thought the people were voting. Uh, okay. Okay. But maybe they're not anymore. I don't, maybe we've just taken the vote <laughs> no, away. No, for some reason, I thought we were like, oh, we should read Fathers and Sons because that's what people were telling us. See, that this is the hard thing about trying to pick books that we haven't read yet is because we can... Like, we don't know as much about them, obviously, because we haven't read them. So it's harder to say 
which would be best to read with the other because how would we know we wouldn't we would not know it doesn't matter someone said fathers and sons would make sense okay fathers and sons wasn't on the list okay well we're we're gonna replace one of those with fathers and sons. <laughs> sorry yeah. you won't take it away you, you can vote <laughs> okay okay no you guys can vote you get to vote by the way the vote is up on my community tab or my channel amazing i think okay the stranger the Canto Monte cristo or do the obscure that was the third one. Oh, right okay well now that now we, yeah we'll <laughs> definitely go because i am extremely confused so we were about to mutiny i'm sorry guys i'm sorry i take it back <laughs> please go not the count of monte cristo yeah where yeah. is mine's like that that might be a lot after brothers. Okay, so far we have <laughs> you realize if you let us vote, we're gonna vote Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> what? We're gonna be screwed. <laughs> okay, so far Hemingway sixty four percent, Steinbeck thirty six percent. Okay, here should I vote? Yes, Olivia, I have been sad since the day I was born. Um, <laughs> since finishing Hemingway. Very sad. Um, I go to your channel. Yes, right? Community. Yes, on yeah. my, if you go to my channel, I think it should just pop up. Right, hopefully. now it's 65 to 35. Reading A Farewell to Arms, I'm not okay. <laughs> You know, I put on my thumbnail so stupid. I put in Spain without the P the first time. Oh my god, no way. <laughs> I woke up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> insane. Oh my god, wait, you're insane. I'm, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, okay, if you click on my channel, I think you should be able to go to the community tab, which is like the yeah. third, maybe the third one. Mm -hmm. um, it was insane. <laughs> And then for June's picks, we'll probably post a poll closer to June. Closer to June. Mm -hmm. Can you believe yeah. February's over? I mean, it's I not know. I know. Time's flying. Um, I voted Hemingway, by the way. Someone asked. Um, may I ask who came up with the game of tomes? I don't remember. It was Rock Paper Scissors. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I feel like you do shoot though, but I don't do shoot. Wait, do you do it on shoot or do you do it's it just rock, paper, scissors? Oh, okay. Wait, so you do it on scissors? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Rock, rock. paper. Okay. Here, let's go quicker. Go quicker. Ready? Rock. Paper. Scissors. Oh, she cut me. Oh, it was me. It was Emma. It was all Emma. <clears throat> I was I was asking Emma before the live show if she and I were Game of Thrones characters, who would we be? I have no clue. I have no clue. Probably. I don't know. Okay, Hemingway's at 62%. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. We're too nice to be in Game of Thrones. Well, there it is. <laughs> Carolyn is, oh, Emma is Arya and Carolyn is Sansa. Hmm. Sisters. Sisters. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, no. no. <laughs> I think um, Hemingway has, well, he hasn't run, won the ultimate throne, but he has won 
the throne. Um, yes, this this one. But Steinbeck was good. It was good. Okay, I did really like it. Mm. Three stars is is solid. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh shoot, I clicked on the wrong one. <laughs> She's a girly Tyrion. <laughs> Wait, which one of us? <laughs> I would be the coffee guy <laughs> season. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my god. <sighs> These are my favorite parts of the live shows with you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be an oh? An end of your battle for the ultimate winner of the year. Ooh. You know what we could do? We could do one of those, like, tournament things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. That would be super cool. On a scale of 1 to 10, how sister... You, like, we were born. <laughs> we came from the same womb. <laughs> oh, my God. Hmm. True. His life was very exciting. Hemingway's life was just mm -hmm. a time, a time to be alive. Okay, so the book for March is David Copperfield by mm -hmm. Charles Dickens. And then for April, we have um, Catcher in the Rye. Yes. So those will be the next two that we will be talking about. So. Mm -hmm. From womb to tomb. From womb to tome. Sorry. <laughs> from womb to tome. That's I also hope from womb to tomb as well. Yes, also womb to tomb. What is, isn't that from something? It's from Cloud Atlas, yeah. I think that's from something. I mean, it's probably... It's probably from a bunch of things. Yeah, it's so. probably from a bunch of things. Um, I refuse to reread Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> Sorry, love you guys. <laughs> You know what's so funny though? I'm so excited to reread it because it is my least favorite classic, but I read it for the first time in high school and I despised it. But I feel like it would be so fun to reread a book I hate because I, I like have never done that. I just, I can't wait to be angry about Holden Caulfield. So I don't know what I'm going to, I'm going to, Anatomy. I don't know what I'm going to Wait, to it's from West Side Story. That's, that's why I know it. Womb to Tomb is also from West Side Story. Thank you. Thank you. That was going to bother me. Okay. Me well. too, baby. Catch her in the rye. <laughs> <sighs> well, it's been a day. It's like 1 yeah, p.m. Nice. Where's nice. Kelsifer? I can't believe he hasn't made an appearance. I think he's sleeping. Well... He's usually very upset, but. Aww. I'm so excited. I Thank you guys for reading with us. Yes. It's been. Yes. This is very fun. Always fun. Uh, I think last, last check, I think Hemingway is still in the lead, but um, maybe this will be the year that we'll finally read Steinbeck's um, you know, other novels. The oh, one yes. that you <laughs> can read forever. Uh, that would be great. That would make me feel a lot less bad about myself. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I never know how to end these things, but I guess see ya. Thank you so much for joining. Yes, yeah, see, see ya. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe we could also do oh, do this as well. We could maybe have some reading. Some reading stuff. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. it's a it's a big one. I'm yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. But um until the next one. We yes, do an outro. You. But we don't have an outro, no. Okay, I'm just gonna end it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Bye. Bye -bye. <laughs>